In England, they have a prime minister whom the English call Keir Stalin. And he's the perfect proof of what I've been telling you. That Pharaoh's nobility, once an Islamic caliphate in Europe, being the perfect feudal system to rule over all the slaves, who will by then all get the mark of the beast through genital mutilation, just as Pharaoh did with all their slaves like the jaywalkers, Nubians, and today's Americans, in order to make sexually obsessed slaves who are too busy with themselves instead of doing a revolt against the masters, for instance. Here it says here, yeah, Sir Keir Stalin, you know, with the Russian symbols here of the Soviet era, here he is. Keir Stalin. He has a beautiful Islamic palace of the Caliphate. And here it says the Islamic Caliphate of Europe, here probably the 12 stars of Europe, the perfect feudal system of Pharaoh's nobility. So for those who don't know yet, this is, it says, England's prime minister. Uh, Keir Starmer. So this is his real name, Keir Starmer. Keir is an Irish name. And here it says Keir Young Un, because he's a socialist prime minister with extremely weird ideas. And he's, he, he's been knighted. So it says Sir Keir Starmer. And the word Sir, of course, it comes from Sire. Before, with the king, he was called Sire. That was the vertical rule. And now we've got the horizontal rule and the E has been dropped and it's only Sir. So in a way, we got the concept of three and four here in it as well, in the same thing. Now, maybe, might be far-fetched, but who knows? They are, they, are, they are quite weird with all these numbers. So Sire is the vertical rule and Sir is the horizontal rule equivalent of the same thing. So now, where does Comrade Keir Stalin or Comrade Keir Young Un get his orders from? Well, he got knighted 10 years ago in 2014, becoming a knight commander of the Order of the Bath, short KCB. So here you see Keir Starmer, and here is the uh, the logo of the uh, Order of the Bath. Here you can see uh, King Charles walking around with a cape of the Order of the Bath. And um, here it says, Ich dien, in German. So the Prince, Ch the King Charles, he has a difference. Beneath it is the uh, the logo of the Order of the Bath and King Charles. He has uh, on top of that the uh, the Templar's cross in it, and it says Ich dien in German. Well, nowadays German you would say Ich diene, but in those days it was Ich dien. So why in German? You know, <laughs> well we all know the answer to that, and I'll explain you later on that this name here, Starmer, is German as well. And uh, so here it says, Sir Keir, Keir Starmer knighted on a red underground for the, uh, which is them, the nobility. Keir Starmer, 10 years ago, together with the king. So they know each other. They're in the same order, right? So here you can see some more about the Ich Dien, or Ich Diener. Here it says, a ribbon below the coronet bears the German motto, Ich dien. Modern German, Ich diene, as I just told you, means I serve. Well, I mean, if it's written in German, who do you think he's serving? Who do you think the bloke is serving? And these are the, um, the three 
feathers of the Prince of Wales, and I told you the three, it's the um, it's it's them. The concept of three, uh, it's them. The concept of four is uh, us. And here's about the Black Prince. It's interesting as well. So here are the images. Here's the next one, and I'll show you the images. It says everywhere Ich Dien in German. So no, it doesn't show up here. Well, you can see it like this, Ich Dien. And here on the three feathers, maybe this one is better. Yeah, it says Ich Dien, Ich Dien. So the three feathers, it means uh, I serve. Oh, well, there was another one. Mm. It says everywhere, I, Ich Dien. Here again, Ich Dien, an old one. And here, Ich Dien. It's all in German. Yeah, Ich Dien. I mean, what is this all about, eh? I mean, Latin, okay, you know, that's um, ancient language and in the old days, you know, was in Latin. Why in German, eh? Ich Dien again with two um, Gurkha cookery knives. And here the three feathers, the concept of three together with the crown. They show it everywhere. And the, uh, well, already the, uh, the pharaohs had this. So, I mean, if you serve the crown and the crown s serves somebody else saying it in Germany, so who do you think you are serving? And if you serve his mate, who was being knighted, the Keir Starmer, and he has a German name, and I'll explain that to you, the uh, etymology of the name Starmer, it's perfect German. All of this is, you know, so who are you serving? Saying yes, sir, no, sir. The order of the bath is an equivalent or an extension of the order of the garter and the Scottish order of this thistle, where I filmed you the thistle in the ancient French Templar town of La Couvertoirade, with the thistle everywhere nailed on each door of each house. The thistle's name is La Cardabelle, and I had a video about it. But the whole video is gone, as so many of my videos have been taken off. So, this is the Knights Templar's thistle, as in the order of this thistle. So, here you see this thistle, the uh, La Cardabelle, nailed on the doors. Here it says La Cardabelle, order of the thistle. And it comes out of the Knights Templars. It symbolizes, of course, the sun and Amun-Ra, because that's where they basically come from, eventually. And it's a secret symbol. They nailed it on the doors, as you can see here, in the Templar town, La Couvertoirade in France. It's probably the biggest, or maybe the only entirely town of the Knights Templars. The order of the bath has, of course, nothing to do with a bathtub, but it's related to the bloodbath of Jerusalem of July 14th, 1099, where the Templars walked up to their knees in the blood bath. Blood bath. The order of the blood bath of the knight commander of the Templars, Sir Comrade Keir Stalin. So here you see the uh, Sir Stalin of the order of the blood bath. Here it says the order of the blood bath, because of course it has nothing in common with a normal bath. And here on the other side you see the uh, the blood bath. Yeah. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if the the the, the first big bloodbath of the um, civil war coming up in England will be on a July 14th, and it's all planned. So I'm not saying that it will be, but I would not be surprised if it will be on a July 14th. July 14th, as in Starmer's order of the bloodbath of July 14th, is always a bloody day organized by Octogon of the Knights Templars as the French Revolution of July 14th, Bastille Day of 1789. The terrorist attack of Nice on July the 14th, 2016. The very bloody revolution of Iraq on July the 14th, 1958, killing King Faisal II, with Iraq changing from a vertical rule monarchy into a horizontal rule republic, just as in France during the revolution, and on the very same date of July 14th. Mere coincidence? No, of course not. July 14th is sort of Knights Templars day of their principality, when the princess sacked the king. Dear slaves, you must watch the numbers and the dates. Therefore, the Keir Stalin's order of the bloodbath was founded on May 18th, another very important day for the Templars, a day they'll always remember, because the Templar stronghold, Acres, Saint-Jean-d'Acre in French, fell on May 18th, 1291 which marks the official end of the Crusades. So, again, Keir Starmer being knighted. It says, Order of the Bloodbath, founded May 18th. And it says, May 18th was the fall of Acres. In the next video, I'll tell you why October 7th is also one of those returning dates. So here you can read it. This is the uh, about the fall of Acres or Acre. And here you can read it. May 18th, 1291. That was the fall of Acres. So the siege uh, was from April 4 to May 18th. Quite a long time, eh? And here you can read this again here. The siege begins, storming the city. There you go. Acre falls by the night of May 18th. Acres was in Memluk hands. That was the end of the Crusades. So here is the order of the bloodbath. And here it says established in May 18th. So the Knights Templar, sort of in the Middle East with the fall of Acres, fell on May 18th, and this is sort of the continuation of it, you know, going on again on the same day, May 18th. These dudes are completely nuts, you know, with all, the, all their numbers and, and things like that. And here it says the... Um, you know, the, uh, the Knights of the Bath you know, they say they took a bath. Well, I, of course, you know, they wouldn't call an order, you know, it, give it, giving it the name of a bath, you know. They usually, they usually lie. And the logo of the order of the bloodbath has the motto, Tria Juncta in Uno for three or meaning 
three joined in one. Well, three and one is four, so it says the concept of three and four, four square and compass, further accentuated by the circle for the compass and the whole thing in a square, as in square and compass, with eight tongues sticking out at us, their slaves, for the octagon. So here's a circle, the whole thing is like in a square. Here it says uh, tria juncta in uno. You know, so it says three and four. And here are sort of eight tongues sticking out at us, you know, the slaves. And there are three crowns because three represents them, our masters. And here you see the three crowns, the masters. And our masters are from Pharaoh's nobility, who traditionally wear a crown. Logically, a knight commander and his mates of the Order of the Bath are not sitting in a bathtub altogether like a bunch of Yakuza Japs. No, a knight commander is a military killer who makes bloodbaths and has barely anything in common with a bathtub. Look here at the website British People of Swiss Descent and how a lot of Swiss names end with E-R, like for instance Starmer, E-R at the end, indicating a person doing something like having a certain job similar to English, a baker, a butcher, a bricklayer, etc. So here I'll show it to you. As you can see here, there's also Scottish people of Swiss descent and Swiss emigrants to the United Kingdom, the Salis family from Switzerland, English people of Swiss descent, well, etc., etc. And so here you can see some names here. Maybe you recognize some people. Here's the uh, nobility from Switzerland taking key positions. You know, De Salis, Royal Navy officers. You know, what is he? An, an admiral. Well, you're taking up orders from a Swiss admiral in the, in the, uh, in the English uh, Navy. Come on. Here, uh, Forer, ending with E-A, Gabat Hula, ending with E-R, all like Starmer, and I'm coming to it, Leutzinger, so in, in, in Switzerland, there's a lot of, you know, Baroness de Reuter, ending with E-R, the Baroness, you know, uh, Joseph Moser, ending with E-R, Nadi, Oh, there's this guy now in Switzerland who is, um, I forgot his name, but he's uh, criticizing a lot, like the Swiss system. But I know it's all, uh, it's all a hoax, you know. Hey, you got his name, you know. Yeah. And here more, Count de Salis. You know, a, a landowner in Middlesex. And um, here, Venna also ending at ER. And here's some more, some more Brenner, uh, Brunner. There was this famous Nazi Brunner. He, uh, I think he ended up in Syria. Here, Baronet. How come, you know, in, you, you got a Swiss Baronet in England. How come, you know? Eyre, also with ER, just like Starm, eh? Here are some more counts, all Swissies. Here are some more. Yeah. Well, and um, so if I punch here um, English people of Swiss descent, you know, this is too much. You know, I, I can't really go through all them, all of them, but there was one that caught my attention here. As I already talked about him, 
Yeah, William Haldeman. He was an English, he was the director of the Bank of England. Remember when I did the video on Elon Musk? Well, Elon Musk from his mother's side, he's out of the Haldeman family, this family here. He's related to the director of the Bank of England, Elon Musk. Yeah. So just uh, watch my video. Maybe it's on my other channel about the, uh, the Haldeman. How did, how did I call it? Um, uh, something with scum or something in the title. Yeah, Elzessa ending with ER. Uh, maybe you recognize some name. Keller is a, is a soccer player for the, uh, the goalkeeper for the young boys. <laughs> and uh, Oba Holza. So, yeah, Peter Ustinov is also of Swiss descent. Yeah, and also Tamara Ustinov. Dutre, a nobility name. So, so there are a lot of people of uh, Swiss descent. Uh, that emigrated to um, to England, yeah, also in Scotland, and there's also of Romansh. Romansh is the fourth language in Switzerland. There's German, French, Italian, and Romansh. That is uh, this one, Romansh. Well, there are probably more. So. Yeah, well, you got the idea, right? So now I'm heading to Starmer, and I'm going to show you some things that will, uh, that will probably shock you. He's not English. He's not acting English. <laughs> Apparently, his politics is against the English people. So could he be a Swissy? Okay, I'll show you. So in Swiss German, there is this military position, der Stürmer, meaning the stormtrooper. And in Old English, the word for Stürmer is Starmer. So picture yourself, Keir Starmer, as a stormtrooper invader, which in fact he is. And I'll prove that to you. Also in football, in Swiss German, an attacker is being called Stürmer. So here you see the victorious Swiss army. You know, they, they need to put their flags everywhere. And in nowadays Swiss German, and also in German, uh, there's this word Stürmer. The ST is like, pronounced, pronounced like sh. Stürmer. And in Old English, the same word is Starmer. You know? uh, and nowadays, English, it is a stormtrooper since the Second World War, I suppose. So, Mr. Starmer is the stormtrooper. And this is how he's behaving, isn't he? Invading England. As you know, or some of you know, that next to Fran French, I also speak, read, and uh, understand fluent German, and I also speak Swiss German. But um, it's also the internet that provides the same information, as you can see here, as what I say, that the surname Stammer or Stammer derives from the Old English, which is, of course, Anglo-Saxon, and meaning storm, plus the ER, as in stammer, ER, of someone doing the storming, like a stormer or a stormtrooper. And here you can read it. You know. So if you punched in, I didn't know about the Old English, by the way, but I immediately recognized the, uh, the, the word storm in it, of course. And if you punch origins, name, Starmer, storm. So I punched this in the uh, search machine 
And then for the name Starmer, it gets this. An habitational name for Starmer in Westrill, Leicestershire, from an old English personal name, Storm. Genitive, Storms, plus Old English. Oh. Um, here, here as well, family search, Starmer, may, name, meaning. I can't open it up because um, I don't want to get all their cookies. But here's another one. Yeah. Starmer family history, Starmer surname, meaning English, uh, a name uh, from Old English, personal name, Storm. So it comes from the Old English word Storm, you know. And here as well, Starmer, yeah, Starmer from an Old English personal name, Storm, Old English. And, well, it's everywhere, you know. Yeah, Starmer, Old English, and Old English, you know, it's Anglo-Saxon. There's someone who found this here, where you can read it yourself. He says, Keir is uh, Gaelic. It is Gaelic, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's dark. Because I know that uh, in Gaelic, or uh, the Celtic language in France, in the east of France, there's the uh, Jura Mountains, and the, that's Celtic. And Ra, it means black, and Ju, it means the forest. It says the Black Forest, which actually is the same mountain, mountain uh, ridge uh, going over into the German uh, Black Forest. It's only interrupted in the, uh, in the Rhine Valley at where Basel is. So Starmer, it, here it says Storm Tempest. Oh, he's definitely going to bring a storm over England, eh? He already did. So, so, Stürmer. Nowadays word in German is Stürmer, as I just written down for you. And the English word for Starmer nowadays is a stormtrooper. Old English is Starmer. And Stormtrooper is New English. And German or Swiss German is Stürmer. Storm for Storm sounds like the posh aristocratic pronunciation of some knighted pharaoh like Sir Keir Starmer for Storm. Like saying, Oh dear chap. The Swiss Germans are saying that there is a huge storm coming up in the world. Similar as saying Stormer instead of Stormer, or Stormtrooper instead of Stormtrooper. So, here you see him being knighted again. Here it says, Bosch English pronunciation Stormer. From the Old English Storm, or the Swiss, German, and German Stürmer, and in New English Stormtrooper, and the Nazis, they had the SA, Ernst Röhm, a pinkless killer, he was the head of the SA, which means Sturmabteilung, you know, like Starmer, you know, the SA would say, you know, just something like Starmer Abteilung or something, right? And Sturm in German, or Swiss German, it means storm. And somebody doing it, like storming, it's like, it's the word is Stürmer. It gets a umlaut here, the, the, the two dots on the U. You know, but it's all the same stuff, you know, it's Anglo-Saxon, Germanic. And this is interesting, you know, linguistically, the Swiss Germans or the English and the, the Swiss Germans, they kept a lot of uh, original Germanic words, you know, and, and they are similar in Swiss German and in English. Like uh, in English, you say listen. In Swiss German, it's losa. Whereas in German, it's something completely different, you know, it's like hören or the two hören. Or, and um, so that's for uh, listen. And there was another word. Oh, yeah. Uh, in Swiss German, loge. It means to look, whereas in German you say sehen or the cooking. So there's a lot of words, and that's probably because they've 
been taking pictures now with satellite pictures, and they saw that the River Rhine, you know, it, it actually goes under the North Sea, you know, and, and, the, and the channel, the English Channel, and it ends up in the River Thames. You know, the River Thames is actually the River Rhine. So, you know, in the old days, they all sailed down the Rhine, you know, from Switzerland, from Basel, and ended up in uh, in London, you know. So there's, there's, and there are more words, there are very many words, you know, they are similar in English and in Swiss German, and they are not similar to German, you know, but very similar both in English and Swiss German. There were quite a few Swiss regiments in the English army, like the Roll Regiment or Roll Regiment, the 347th British Swiss Legion, De Meuron Regiment, and quite a few others. So I suppose that, you know, remember that Stammer, it means the stormtrooper, nowadays German Stürmer which it's almost the same. It's only one letter different. The A is a uh, U with umlaut. And it's a, it's a military um, a position, you know, a stormtrooper. So I suppose, you know, not all of these uh, Swiss soldiers in the British army, you know, they, they finally went back to Switzerland. No, they stayed in England. You know, and they got names like Starmer. Well, he was a stormtrooper in the in the in the army. So when the family names, the surnames were invented, you know, um, mostly after the um, the French Revolution, then this guy probably said, "Well, I was a stormtrooper in the army. My uh, my name is Starmer." You know, so I read it for you. You know. Here, the Kingdom of England began to recruit Swiss mercenaries after the glorious revolution of 1689. The first capitulation was signed in 1690 between England and the Protestant cantons of Zurich, Bern, Glarus, Schaffhausen and Appenzell Außerrhoden, as well as the city St. Gallen. Starting in the 1750s, Swiss soldiers also served in the armies of the British East India Company, you know, already in the 17th century. So between 1751 and 1754, 580 mercenaries, mostly Swiss and Germans, were sent to the East Indies. The um, East India Company, uh, Swiss contingent, was increased in 1757 by four regiments recruited by Jacques-Marc Prévost, a, a Genovan uh, officer of the Royal American uh, Regiment. Oh yeah, and this Prévost um, family, um, they had a, a descendant later on in history, and um, he, well, he became the first director of the CIA, Alan Dulles. You know, same family, you know. So with uh, Jacques-Marc Prévost, the, uh, the Swissies already uh, got their sleeper agents in the Americas and also in England, you know. So he was an officer of the Royal American Regiment. Uh, again, you see the Templar's Cross. And it even says, a, what is it, a, a compass in the middle? A, uh, it was the British Army in... Um, in, in America, this one here. So he started to fight against the Americans, this Prévost family, and finally they fought America and the Americans from the inside out, like their descendants, Alan Dulles, becoming the, um, the head of the CIA. <laughs> we all know the CIA is against the American people. I already told you this. I gave you the proofs about uh, the Prévost family and Alan Dulles. I continue to read, because this is very important. During the Seven Years' War, the Swiss were numerous among the auxiliary troops from continental Europe that fought in the war's Indian theater. Oh, they're everywhere, on behalf of the, um, the East India Company, EIC. 
Some Swiss mercenaries reached important posts with the company and amassed considerable wealth, notably through looting. Oh, you know, Nazi gold in Switzerland, you know. I've been doing this for a long time, you know, Knights Templars. I've always been doing this. Another important theater of war in the 18th century was North America, where Swiss mercenaries in the British army served in the French and Indian War. Some, such as Henri Bouquet and Frederick Haldimand. Ah, there you go. Henri Bouquet, I already told you, there was the Sw a Swiss colonel, and he um, gave uh, all the infested um, uh, blankets to the Native Americans, uh, killing them all in North America. Swiss, he did it. You know? And Frederick Haldeman, again from the, I uh, already told you about this guy, from the Elon Musk Haldeman family. And Elon Musk now is with, uh, with Donald J. Trump. You know, they always have three names, you know. And be aware of the of the middle name of the guys with the three names. Be aware. And um, uh, later on, it says here he served as the governor of Quebec, and he was a good friend of uh, Henri Bouquet. I already told you all this, but you you slave probably all forget about it. Eh? So. Both from the Royal American Regiment, it's an English regiment, achieved distinction in North America and held high offices in the British colonial administration. Charles Daniel de Meuron, yeah, a former colonel uh, of the French Swiss Guards, founded his own mercenary regiment under the name Regiment de, uh, or, uh, Regiment de Meuron. You know, there was another uh, Swiss regiment. It says uh, the Regiment de Meuron was a regiment of infantry originally raised in Switzerland in 1781. So that's just before the French Revolution of 1789 for service with the Dutch East India Company. At the time, the French, Spanish, Dutch and other armies employed units of Swiss mercenaries well, anyway, the Regiment de Meuron was also integrated in the English army. And a lot of guys, you know, they stayed in England afterwards, you know, getting names like Der Stürmer, you know, the, the Stormtrooper, Mr. Starmer, being completely against the English people. And uh, their, their ancestors always have been. So if you don't understand history, you will never understand uh, Mr. Sir Keir Starmer and what he's doing. If you don't understand history, if you don't understand Switzerland and what they're doing, you will never understand anything about Keir Starmer. You can give him names like Keir Stalin, huh, huh, that's funny, you know, but uh, it won't solve anything, you know. I, I, I propose that his name is uh, Keir the Stormtrooper, Keir Sturmer. So, Regiment de Meuron, first serving the Dutch East India Company, and from 1796, the British East India Company. Yeah, under British service, the regiment fought in the Mysore campaign. I don't know, well, that looks like India, isn't it? Yeah. The Mediterranean campaigns of the Napoleonic Wars and the Peninsula War. So you guys in India, you know, remember the Swissies uh, came to your country and killing your people. You know, the same as Napoleonic Wars, uh, as they did in France. The Peninsula War, where is that? That's in Spain. Same thing. All over the world, they've been killing people. You know, leading to names like Starmer. The Regiment de Vadville. Oh, there it is. There was a Swiss regiment founded by Frédéric de Vadville from the French part, I suppose, of Switzerland, and recruited from regiments that served between 1799 and 1809 in the Austrian army, but in British pay. Oh, well, you know. The troops then signed on as mercenaries to be paid by the British. Yeah, well, the uh, regiment de Vadville was a Swiss regiment founded by Louis and, uh, de Vadville. Yeah, there he is. No, he's not. 
and recruited from regiments that served between 1799 and 1809 in the Austrian army, but in British pay. Well, same thing. The Swiss soldiers were then transferred to British service. Look, I repeat, I, I, I'd like to read this three times. The Swiss soldiers were then transferred to British service. You know, Starmer, the stormtrooper. Stürmer becoming Starmer. Now they fought in the Napoleonic Wars, ma mainly around the Mediterranean. They were based in Malta and then in Egypt from 1801 to 1803, fighting in Sicily and Naples. So remember, you Italian people watching this video, the Swiss have coming over to your country, killing your people. They've done, they've done this all over the world, and they're still doing it. You know, I narrowly escaped a Swiss uh, assassination attempt a few weeks back, or it's already two months back, maybe now. The regiment fought in the Battle of Maida in southern, southern Italy in July 1806, <coughs> kept up the strength by Spanish and Portuguese recruits from 1811 to 1813. The Vadville Regiment was involved in the Peninsular War in Spain, defending Cadiz during the Siege of Cadiz. The Muron and Vadville Regiment both sailed to Canada. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, Haldeman, here he is, Frederick Haldeman, the governor, uh, an ancestor of Elon Musk, to fight in the War of 1812. The Vaudeville Regiment saw action at the siege of Fort Airy and at the Battle of Fort Oswego. All Swiss units in British service were demob demobilized in 1816. A short-lived British-Swiss British Legion recruited in the 1850s for the Crimean War, was disbanded uh, in 1856 without having been deployed. Yeah, well, you don't go that whole way without having been deployed, eh? Uh, so, of course, look, look at the, the image. It's a war there, you know. So Ukrainians and Russians, you know, remember the Swissies and, and they, they came to your country and kill your people, as they still do today, you know. So here it says, all Swiss units in British service, again here, uh, were demobilized in 1816. And then what happened? Did they go back to Switzerland? You know, by that time, they spoke perfect English, probably, you know, like Starmer. And they stayed in England. Of course they did, you know. Now, I'll tell you a lot more about it. You know, there's even places like Little Switzerland in Switzerland. And, uh, well, and I'll, I'll wait it for, I'll keep it for later. Yeah, I'll. So it's this website here if you want to read it yourself. Uh, here, no. Landsknecht. Yeah, Swiss mercenaries in Wikipedia. So this is about the Rolls Regiment. You know, maybe Rolls Royce, maybe the name, maybe is Swiss, you know, just like uh, uh, that American car, uh, Chevrolet, you know, the, the guy was Swiss, Mr. Chevrolet, you know. So the Rolls Regiment, also the Rolls or von Rolls Regiment, was a regiment of the British Army formed of Swiss, French and German soldiers in 1794 for service in the French Revolutionary Wars. But it was mostly Swiss soldiers and um, in the British Army. And here the regiment's first colonel was Louis de Rolle, a former, former officer of the pre-revolutionary French Swiss Guards. You know, they were everywhere. And why were all these Swiss mercenaries everywhere? Well, because Switzerland was founded by the Knights Templars in 1291. You know, and the first colonel, Louis de Rolle, of course, that's uh, nobility, de Rolle. He was a Swiss mercenary active during the French Revolutionary Wars and Napoleonic Wars. So this is another regiment 
integrated, another Swiss regiment integrated uh, into the, uh, the British Army. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, Sir Starmer, you know, being knighted to sire Sir you know, by the king himself, Mr. Charles. And uh, he's probably a descendant of one of this uh, uh, pharaonic nobility like Louis de Rolle and the other ones we just saw. Uh, de Meuron, uh, because you, you you will not get so high up in politics or, or get into politics at all if you're not a pharaonic nobility. You know? So the British army was full of Swissies and many of them stayed. So here's some more about the British Swiss Legion, the 347th British Swiss Legion from 1855 to 56. The British Swiss Legion was one of three foreign legions raised for the British service during the Crimean War, the others being the British German Legion and the British Italian Legion. It was originally intended that the British Swiss Legion should consist of eight battalions of infantry, two battalions of rifles, two regiments of cavalry, besides artillery, uh, train and sappers and miners. Well, you can read it yourself. So, you know, dear Ukrainians, you see, 200 years ago, not even 200 years ago, you were attacked. You know, the same ones who were doing, who are doing this now, you know, as the Russians are doing. The same things, you know, it happened already 200 years ago, and uh, this time by the English. So you really want to trust them? Well, I don't, you know, because it's the nobility. You know, the English people, okay, they're quite some good people, you know, but the stupid slaves, you know, they always go into the army. And apparently the English, uh, if, I look, if I see this, the English people didn't want to go to war in the army, you know. And at that time, it wasn't compulsory yet. So they took over the Swiss to do it for them, the Swiss mercenaries. So, you know, and in Crimea, all this has been going on for a thousand years, I think, you know, the one war after the other. Uh, probably because of the Cossacks and the Cossacks, they want to rule over themselves. They always wanted this, you know. They did so for a long time, for hundreds of years, I think. And Pharaoh's nobility, uh, they hate this, you know, when a people wants to rule over themselves, you know. Uh, they hate nationalism. And, you know, that's why there's always a war around Crimea and the Cossacks, you know. By England, England doing it, and then it's uh, the Russians doing it, or the the ones ruling over Russia, because uh, one at least one million Russian men don't even want to go to war if it isn't two million men. You know, it's not really the people. Now I told you before, we need a vertical rule against our masters. We don't need any more horizontal rules. You know, one people against another, or one religion against another. Uh, you know, now we see all the uh, nationalists rising again at once, you know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, the Muslims aren't really our enemy, you know, well, they are not my enemy because I understand. I mean, who brought them here in the first place, you know, in this uh, respect, you know, to uh, divide and rule and put people up against each other, you know. Well, I could go on, you know, for hours, you know, but this is about the Swiss Legion and about Starmer. So together with his Octagon Templar Order of the Bloodbath, I have no doubt at all that Starmer is the Englified version of Stürmer, and he knows it. Same thing as we've seen in America with Swiss Huber becoming Hoover, and also the name Eisenhower. It says Hoover is the anglicized version of the German and Dutch surname Huber, 
originally designating a landowner or a prosperous small farmer. Notable people with this surname include, so there are a lot of, but here was the President of the United States, Herbert Hoover, and here J. Edgar Hoover, the, uh, the FBI director. And those two, the President Hoover and um, the FBI Hoover, they were in office at the very same time the Wall Street crash and the theft of, um, of the savings of the American people took place. So here's some more, you can read it yourself. Hoover became Hoover, like uh, Sturmer became Starmer. So if you punch Herbert, Hoover, Hoover, and the same with J. Edgar Hoover, I'm not going to do that as well. You know, it, it comes out and already shown that to you. Here the... Um, the uh, genealogy chart showing how, how Hans Huber is the seventh great grandfather to Herbert Hoover, the 31st US president via their common ancestor of Hans Huber. And here as well, yeah, Hoover, whose family name was originally Huber, was born into a Quaker family of distant and Swiss Huber. Uh, and well, and so on and so forth. So here is a list of Swiss Americans in Wikipedia. And there are many Americ Swiss Americans. There are one million today. See, like uh, uh, René Zellweger, the uh, Hollywood star. There are many others as well. But what I wanted to show you is like President Herbert Hoover, there he is, of Swiss descent. He's a Swiss American. And also Obama, also. And um, I hear Henry, Henry Wert. He was the commandant of the. Uh, of the concentration camp in America. And here, Henri Bouquet, you know, the guy who murdered the uh, American uh, Indians. And uh, ah, here he is, uh, J. Edgar Hoover of, of the FBI, also Hoover. So these are the Hoovers, and there are many, many, many more. So you find this in, and they did the same in England, you know, like Starmer and many others. And now they are following politics like destroying the English, you know, from the inside out. Just like these um, Swiss sleeper agents did in America. They import themselves into a foreign country, integrate, change their names into a more inconspicuous form of their original names, nicely fading into the local landscape and then go for all key positions and terrorize the indigenous population locally and nationally. Yes, Sir Keir Sturmer has all the trademarks of a Swissy fifth column sleeper agent and that's why he doesn't act British and behaves totally anti-British. So here you see the Swiss flags again, says so Switzerland. Here it says, fifth column, sleeper agents, Stürmer is Starmer. So from now on, I call Starmer Swissy Care der Stürmer as the Nazi magazine by the ethnic Swiss Julius Streicher and his anti-Jaywalker magazine Der Stürmer, equally anti-Jaywalker as Keir Stürmer is doing, totally advocating Hamas and the Islamic Caliphate. 
So here you see the bloke. It says here, Julius Streicher. You see the same ending, E-R, so it means he's doing something. Streicher, from the uh, verb streichen, or anstreichen, it means like painting. So he's a painter. Another word is maler. Yeah, so a painter. Painting houses, probably. And here it says, der Stürmer, as I told you before, from the word Sturm, meaning storm. And if there's uh, like somebody doing it, it gets an umlaut, the two dots on the U here. So S-T-U-R-M, without the dots, it means storm, storm, as in English, it's almost the same. So this is the origin of the name Starmer, and he's doing exactly the same thing. And a caliphate wants Sharia law, etymologically, from the demotic pharaonic language Sharia, for King Pharaoh, son, pregnant, meaning the pharaohs were born out of the sun, Amun Ra as part of the great Ennead, and come from beyond and not from this earth. That's what the word says. So here you see uh, Muslims, they say Sharia for the UK, Sharia for Britain, but they don't know, they don't understand, as it says here, a feudal dictatorship. Sharia law and a caliphate is a feudal dictatorship like in um, almost a, a worse than in Saudi Arabia. And I know that Muslims, they don't like, uh, you know, the Sultan or the, uh, of, uh, the, the royal family of Saudi Arabia because they don't treat Muslims uh, right. So I don't understand that these guys, you know, if they should have a look at Saudi Arabia and then they wouldn't do this, you know. So a real you know, bearded Muslim, he wouldn't be happy in this feudal dictatorship called Sharia. And it is from the pharaonic words, Sar, meaning a king or pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus, sarcophagus, it's a box to put the king in when he's dead, or Caesar, the king of Rome, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, uh, King Charles, his title is Sar, and it stands for uh, Son Altesse Royal, His Royal Highness. There was Sarkozy, the uh, the King of France, the former President of France, and Ri. It means son, like in Ra, and Ah. It means big or pregnant. When a woman is pregnant, it's quite big. So Sar Ri Ah. It means Pharaoh, son, pregnant. It means the pharaohs are born out of the sun. That's what Sharia, that's what it means. It's a pharaonic dictatorship, and it's not good for a Muslim. It's not good for any man at all or woman. It's a, a feudal dictatorship like we had in Europe, you know, with the kings and the castles, and we still have that. A feudal dictatorship, you know, it's a, um, it's not good, you know, that Maybe there are books written about it, and these guys, they, you know, they, they long back to for this, and they think in a, um, in a Sharia, a caliphate, we can be a real man, and, you know, and no, it's the opposite, you know, they will put you down, you know, they will rape your women, and uh, they're the guys in the castle. And it's the same thing in the Orient as it is in Asia, as it is in, in, in Europe. These guys in the castles, you know, they have this feudal systems, you know. It says feudal dictatorship. So think it over, guys. I've got nothing against you Muslims, really. Uh, you Muslims are the only guys in Europe with whom I can talk about, you know, these pink list killers everywhere. With Europeans, I can't even talk about it, you know. Immediately, I'm um, um, whatever, some, somebody bad or, you know. So, think it over, guys. Sharia is not good for you. Basically, it's these pharaohs here who want Sharia law. 
and a feudal caliphate for Pharaoh's nobility, so they can rule in total control over humanity. The only solution against these pharaohs is humanity unite all together against these pharaohs and their Nazi like politicians like Keir der Sturmer. I guess you guys in England can't make any videos like this one here, out of fear ending up in one of the Octogon Sturmer's English concentration camps. So Homie Ross does it for you and leads the way towards total resistance. So come on and join me. So this is a real picture of um, King Charles al Winsar bin Rabia. It's not a Photoshop, you know. Here he feels at home, just like this one here. He feels at home in this world here, in the Muslim world, apparently. And here you see the octagon behind him, like most of the badges. And that's that's from the Knights Templars, you know. Um, if, you if an archaeologist or a um, historian finds a ruins which is octagonal, well, you know the Knights Templars did it because most of their buildings are octagonal, just as the badges. And everything, military, police, it all comes out of the, uh, the military order of the uh, Knights Templars. So uh, that's why I wrote here the Octogon Stormtrooper. Hey, his name is Starmer, which means Der Stürmer. Uh, here it says Mr. Stürmer, like this one, Der Stürmer, with the NATO stuff here on it. You see the swastika in it, eh? You can see this, eh? Just, just only look at the black one here. It's a swastika. And there's the concept of four, and the whole thing is in a circle. So it says square and compass, you know. Hey, hey you pretend you didn't know that, Mr. Stürmer. Of course you did, eh? Just as the um, the death skull, the skull and bones on the SS signs, you know. It's it's the same as this one here. You know? Well, anyway, Keir Sturmer certainly behaves like a Nazi, having many English political prisoners like Stephen Yaxley and even slowly killing them in high-security prisons like Peter Lynch, and Keir Stummer even teams up with the Muslims, just as Adolf and the Nazis did with two huge Muslim SS divisions, Skanderbeg and Hanshar. Keir the Stormtrooper will probably go goose-stepping through London with all the jihadists behind him. And here you can see that goose tapping is still being practiced in Europe. This, I picked this up from 2012 in my channel Gatsefrats. I uploaded this probably 12 years ago. 2012, yeah, 12, 12 years ago. So November 2012. Now we are November, 12 years ago. So if you want to have a good laugh, go and watch this video. And it might prepare you for what uh, Keir Sturmer is preparing. Go and watch it. So here is uh, one of those Muslim SS divisions, the 13th Waffen Mountain Division of the SS Hanshar. And this knife here, this sword, is the Hanshar. It's like the Ottoman or the uh, Muslim sword in those days. And they were like 17,000 men. They were the biggest SS divisions in, of the Nazis. And as you know, the, um, well, here you see them, you know, with the, uh, with the Fez, just like Tommy Cooper. You know, the uh, the comedian having this uh, fez, Muslim fez on his head. And the, uh, as we know, 
the Germans lost the war, but the Nazis won the war. And these Nazi liars, they told the Germans, well, you must be blonde and blue-eyed. On the other hand, you know, these ones here, they told them, well, you must have dark hair and, and brown eyes, you know, and be a Muslim. Everyone else, they were telling everyone else a different story, you know. So here you can see them. And uh, here they got the skull and bones, total Freemasonry. Here it says uh, Islam and jaywalkers. Here they got the hanchar together with the, uh, the swastika. You know, they don't look very blonde and, and blue-eyed to me, eh? You know, well, the Nazis were liars, and they still are. Here you got the head of them, you know, the Mufti of Jerusalem, Amin al-Husseini, the head of the, um, of the, um, the Nazi SS Muslim divisions. Now here more, you know, and they did a real genocide in the Balkan, killing uh, half a million uh, blondes and blue-eyed, you know, if you want. Uh, on Europeans, jaywalkers, and uh, and Bohemians. Yeah, they're all praying. Look, the SS is praying. Look at it. And this is what, um, you know, this is the dream of Keir Sturmer, you know, to have a Muslim division in England to fight the English people, you know. Well, I mean, the dumb slaves are not doing anything anyway, you know. They just walk up and down the street, and then they go and have a pint. And that's all, you know. Now look, they're having a game or what, or hanging someone, or having the Tommy Cooper fest. I don't know what that is. Yeah. So this is the Hanjar. And they had a couple of other... Now it says here there were Bosnians, mostly Bosnians in it. And uh, yeah, the Mufti of Jerusalem, or you can find it yourself. Here it says uh, the Bosnian SS volunteers, you know. And, uh, you know, they said, like, go and kill the blue eyed and the blondes. And the Nazis telling the Germans uh, the other thing, you know. Nazis were lying, you know, they, they lied to the European peoples. They even lied to the Muslims. They lied to everyone. And they won the war. They're still there. They came out of the Knights Templars. So here's the other um, Muslim SS division, the 21st Waffen, that means weapons, mountain division of the SS Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg was sort of a hero in in uh, for the uh, for the Albanians. So this was more an Albanians. You see here the Albanian flag, you know, the double-headed eagle. Same as in Russia, you know, it means the old world order and the new world order. That was it means, you know, the vertical rule and the horizontal rule. And you know, we see in Russia the same thing. You know, Putin doing the same thing. He's uh, putting uh, a lot of uh, Muslims and uh, Kadyrov, you know, from from uh, Chechnya, putting them in the uh, to kill Ukrainians. I told you, and then the Nazis won the war, you know, with all the the Nazi gold they hid in uh, in the in their principality in the Alps. That's why it goes on. And Putin, where I already told you in my Putin film, he is from uh, St. Petersburg, and that's where the, um, that's really next to the, um, the area of the Teutonic Knights. And this is the Russian Mafia, it's the Teutonic Knights. As I told you, the Mafia in Sicily, it comes from the Knights Templars. I made a whole, what is it, a five-hour video about it, you know. And here's some more. There are also Arab, there were also Arab, um, a couple of Arab uh, SS um, uh, brigades, not divisions, but uh, a bit smaller. You know, so this is the dream of uh, Mr. Stoma, Mr. Sir Stoma.
And here there was also a free Arabian legion under the Nazis here. Uh, the Free Arabian Legion was the collective name of several Nazi German units formed from Arab volunteers from the Middle East, not notably Iraq and North Africa. So there were several, uh, many, there were many. Uh, next to the two divisions, I think there were eight units you know, uh, of Muslims for the uh, doing jihad in Europe, like Hitler wanted the jihad in the Balkan and the jihad against the Europe European peoples, just as Mr. Stormer wants this in England. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah, look here, this guy here. Well, this is also, this is a, 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 a um, aristocratic name, al -Gal Gailani. you yeah. know. This was their badge, which you, which you can see here. Here you can see their badge. Like here, you know, Freies Arabien. Yeah, yeah. Is this aber noch immer nicht? <laughs> it says free, free Arab world. I mean, they still don't have it. You know? All Arabs killing Europeans. Is the dream of Mr. Stommer. And he made it clear on what side he stands, eh? what he wants. He made it perfectly clear. Now, look, here's some more. There was also Azerbaijani Legion in the Wehrmacht. Now look at that. Also, Muslims, the Free Indian Legion. Also in the German army, look at that, as part of the German army. And, uh, well, let's have a look at this one here. Yeah, the Azerbaijani Legion. And look at what they did with the Armenians this year. You know, no, nobody said a thing, you know. So I wonder how many Armenians this guy here uh, murdered. You know for the SS, for the, for the Nazis. So can it be even more clear that the Nazis were against the Europeans and against the Germans? Can it be more clear? Uh, hardly can be any clearer, can it now? Eh? The dream of Mr. Stormer to have a Muslim SS division in England. The first name Kerr is Irish and means black and it sounds like the German and Swiss German word Cal, which means a geezer, chap or dude. So altogether Cal Stürmer means a stormtrooper dude, which I will call this Swiss fifth column sleeper agent from now on. So here again, the newspaper, Der Stürmer, and here, Kerl, Stürmer. Kerl, it means like chap or dude. In German, you would put Kerl behind Stürmer, you know, like uh, Der Stürmer Kerl, you know, the, uh, the stormtrooper chap, like in English, probably. But you, you will understand what it means, the perfect German, you know, Kerl Stürmer. So I will call him like this from now on. You know, I mean, I've proven to you Sturmer is his real name, and I'll give you some more proofs. So he needs uh, something Swiss German in front of it. Um, so, Karl Sturmer. So here you can see it. If I punch name care, there I get here the meaning black, dark, an ancient fortification closely related to the Irish Kiaran. I hope I pronounced it right. Is an Irish masculine name that means dark or black. So black, he's black indeed, eh? Like the SS, the Stürmer, the black, the black SS. And here as well. You know, name Kerr, originating from Ireland, derives its meaning from the Irish word dub, 
which translates to black. And here as well, I can't open it, you know, I don't want to take all the cookies. Name Keir is a boy's name of Irish origin, meaning dark or black. So the black SS. You know, here it says Switzerland, Switzerland. And if you think this is in Switzerland, you're wrong. You're terribly wrong. Look at the English flag. This here is in London. And Keir Starmer, or Karl Stürmer, he was born right next to this place here. So a lot of Swissy sleeper agents were born around Leicester Square in Soho, London, which has a predominantly ethnic Swiss population, where adjacent to that Swiss part of London, Karl Stürmer, was born in Suffolk, which Americans would pronounce Southwark, but the Londoners pronounce Suffolk. So I read it for you here. Uh, history. Look, in London, 200 years of Anglo Swiss history. Eh, Keir Starmer? The link between Britain and Switzerland has always been a strong one. Lacking in mountains, Britons have always found the Alps a powerful draw, and without a coastline, the Swiss have found the island of Great Britain fascinating, huh, isn't it? In 1865, Britain Edward Wimper became the first man, well, etc. However, it hasn't been one-way traffic. In the early 18th century, several families emigrated from Switzerland to England. In the 18th century, imagine, you know, that's the 1700s. And by the late 19th century, a Swiss community had developed around Leicester Square in central London. And Mr. Keir Starmer, he was born not very far from there. He was born in London, yeah? Look, the Swiss centre, Leicester Square. Now better known by children as the location of M&M's world. Well, why M&M? The Swiss centre building in Leicester Square was created to showcase Swiss culture and encourage tourists to visit Switzerland. The Swiss centre, so, you know, this is the Swiss centre of London. You believe it, you know, like Wisconsin or Swissconsin. And I'll tell you some more about Swissconsin. The Swiss Center designed by David Aberdeen in the modernist style of architecture opened in 1968. It featured a Swiss bank, of course, the London branches of Switzerland tourism and Swiss air a cafe, several Swiss-themed restaurants, and a souvenir shop stocked with lots of chocolate, naturally. The building was demolished, demolished in 2008. Uh, it says the area officially renamed Swiss Court by the Lord Mayor of Westminster as a token of the lasting friendship between Switzerland and the UK. Now, well, now, as another token of the friendship between Switzerland and the UK, they gave you his, this Swiss fifth column prime minister, Karl Stürmer. I always do it, I told you. I've, I've been telling you for years. I always do this, the Swissies. Um, yeah. It features Swiss figures that move against traditional Swiss backdrop. Wow with all the images, with all the Swiss cantons, with 27 bells. Oh, wouldn't you like to go there, eh? Charlie Chaplin, Statue, Leicester Square. Well, you know, well, it's only because Charlie Chaplin, he went and lived in Switzerland, you know, like uh, Phil Collins for the tax evasion, that's all. You know. So it's okay, it's nice, you know, if you can put in your article, Charlie Chaplin, you know. I mean, what else do they have to to be proud of, you know? 
here, the Sun and 13 Cantons. I will tell you some more about it later. From the mid 19th century, a distinct community of Swiss nationals grew around Soho and Leicester Square. The Sun and 13 Cantons pub on Great Pulteney Street opened in 1756. Well, how many years? That's what is that? 250 years ago, more, 270 years ago. The unique name comes from the pub association with the Swiss watchmaking community that worked in the era, area. And the word canton refers to the Swiss word for the equivalent counties. At the time, there were 12 count, cantons in Switzerland, and so a large Swiss community became known as the 13th canton. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Soho is part of Switzerland. You know, they they say it themselves, you know. As I showed you before, the, you know, the Swiss, they call Germany the Große Kanton. Everywhere they take the key positions and then it belongs to them, you know. They say it here. You know, Soho, large Swiss community became known as the 13th Canton. Well, I can stop this film. It says it all. Oh, the building that housed the original pub was rebuilt after a fire. Yeah, well, probably uh, an assurance fraud, eh? And when it reopened in 1882, the 13 cantons was added as a tribute to its Swiss patrons. Now, there's also a Swiss church founded in 1762 by a group of expatriates, Swiss, and the first Helvetic chapel was built near Moore Street in Soho in 1775. Funded by contributions from the cities of Geneva and Bern, the church was an integra in integral part of the Swiss community until 1817. The pastor was even the official issuer of passports to Swiss citizens in London. Oh, really? Yeah, it was funded, the church was funded by Geneva and Bern. You know, nowadays the Muslims, they do the same thing. You know, the mosques, they're, they're being financed by Qatar and by uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, where all the money is, you know. So then you've got the stronghold, you know, under the, under the, uh, under the, under the, veil of a uh, of a church or a mosque you know then you bring in the weapons and you hide the uh, the rpgs and all that and uh, you do your anti-english propaganda which they probably did here as well you know same system and this is the system of the knights templars they also said oh we believe in uh, in mr jesus and we are real christians no they were not you know the, the Templars chapels, they where they were hiding and you know uh, conspiring against their hosts. Yeah, this another the Swiss cottage, a Swiss tavern, uh, which is called Ye Olde Ye Olde Swiss Cottage. Hmm, that's old English, eh? Now oh, there it is, Ye Olde Swiss Cottage, Moseyman's Anton Moseyman. And uh, Belgravia, a private dining club. Oh, that's only for the rich, probably. Eh? For the uh, for the posh, who say who, who say Stama instead of Stoma, you know. Stama to Germans and Stama. They always say an A for everything, you know, for the E and the and the O. It all becomes an A. Sama. And the Germans. <laughs> uh, well, it goes on. Well, can you believe it? This is this is London here. Yeah. Incredible, eh? Right? The uh, ethnic Swiss in London and uh, Karl Sturmer is one of them. And also here in Wikipedia, you can read about the Swiss center of London. Yeah. So, Leicester Square. So, so here it is. This is London here, and it's here, Soho. It says Soho. 
and uh, Karl Sturmer. It was born around here. I'll show that to you in a minute. You know, just cross the river Thames and you know, you're there. His ancestors probably also came from here. And here are the, uh, this is the Wikipedia about the Swiss abroad. They call it the uh, Swiss diaspora. And in Switzerland, they call it the fifth Switzerland, you know, like a fifth column. So these here, so there are about one million Swiss abroad. So these are the ones. This is actual, you know, who haven't gotten an American passport or a nationalized English yet. So they're still Swiss, you know, so probably 10 years ago, you know, they have been abroad for 10 years. So maybe not long enough to get a, um, a passport. So these are not the ethnic Swiss, like one million that are in America. So even today, if you look at the numbers, there's almost 100,000 in the United States. You know, I'm not talking about the 1 million ethnic Swiss who have been there for um, two or 300 years. And in the United Kingdom, there are 40,000. So, and from the moment on, they, they get a, an American or English uh, passport and they become nationalized you know the numbers will disappear it will become zero and here also united kingdom it will become zero you know but they're still swiss you know and they're still yeah and they're about one million all over the world was it yeah almost yeah so that this means it's still going on you know there's still uh, emigrating to other uh, countries so this is these numbers are showing you know just after they emigrated and haven't gotten the uh, the other nationality yet so this is the um, the actual swiss abroad the actual thing going on so the expansion is still going on, you know, and there are 1 million, almost 1 million here, yeah, 800,000 who are going for the key positions and try to integrate as a fifth column. They even call it that themselves, the fifth Switzerland. And it is a fifth column, I tell you. Hey, Karl Sturmer, Keir Starmer. So this here is about Keir Starmer, yeah. And if I look at his face, you know, I've I've seen Swiss bankers look like this, you know. He looks very, very Swiss. You know, doesn't look English. And I know Switzerland, I can tell you. So, yeah, early life and education. Uh, Keir Rodney Stam, oh look, he's got a middle name as well. Yeah, always, you know, be careful if you see the middle name, you know. Uh, so that's Keir R. Stammer. <laughs> so was born in 1962 at Southwark in southeast London. Yeah. Uh, which is near to the Swiss centre. Well, you can read the rest yourself, but I don't want to uh, recommend it. Yeah gives you a bad day so you know he definitely is the enemy within how he is um, conspiring against the indigenous um, english people and if you want to know who your enemy is you know you need to get some intel on him so i'm giving you the intel you know where he's from where his name is from the etymology of his name and with this information, which you should uh, spread to everyone, so we, you all know who the enemy is, you know, this intel is important. So spread it, you know, to, uh, to all the people in England and Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland and Wales and even to the Muslims, you know, and all the other immigrants because. Um, we all have the same enemy within, although it might not uh, 
appear like this for the moment, but it will be in the future, you know. So this is a part of London. Here's the River Thames. And here's Leicester Square, Soho. So here's the Swiss Centre is here. Uh, if you just cross the dip here and go a little bit here, you get to uh, Suffolk, or South Walk, as Americans would pronounce it. And I would too, maybe. I don't know why they, the Londoners, Londoners pronounce it Suffolk. So here was um, Karl Stürmer. Here he was born here. So, which is quite next to the um, to Leicester Square, the Swiss centre of uh, London. But of course, it started here, you know, and the uh, the Swiss fifth column. They're probably everywhere, you know, and certainly here as well. So from the ethnic Swiss Leicester Square. If you walk from the Swiss center of London, as they actually call it, no joke, you walk to Cleopatra's Needle on the River Thames, which is an original 4,000 years old pharaonic symbol of domination. The obelisk here is a symbol of the pharaonic domination. And then follow the river this way here to the genuine Knights Templars area called Temple Place and the real Knights Templars church, still right next to where the Swissies live at Leicester Square, Soho. As of course, the Knights Templars founded Swissieland on August the 1st, 1291, only two and a half months after the end of the Crusades, with the fall of the very last Templars stronghold in the Middle East called Acres on May 18th, 1291, as I just told you before. So, of course, Swissies and Templars live right next to each other in London, and with Karl Stürmer. In the neighborhood. So here you can see it was uh, the temple church was built by the Knights Templars here in uh, 1185. So here's the temple church and it's on the way to um, to Mr. Keir Starmer. And here So we walked from here and to the needle and then here. And we follow a little bit more from there and Templars area. You walk to Blackfriars, almost as in the Bourne movies where they talk about Blackbriar. Coincidence? No, not really. And remember that care means black. And Black Friar is on the other side where he was born and next to the Templar neighborhood. So the word Friar here, it means a member of a, a monastic brotherhood. And it comes etymologically from the French frère, a brother, as in a brotherhood. So this is the brotherhood of the, um, of the Black Hoods the black robes, the black friars. Then from there, you walk to London Bridge, cross it, and you are in the Karl Stürmer, Keir Starmer, Suffolk neighborhood, where he was born. So London's Swiss center is connected to Karl Stürmer's Suffolk through Cleopatra's pharaonic obelisk, the Knights Templars area, the Blackfriars Brotherhood, and the London Bridge in a short walking distance. In the Swiss Stormtroopers Suffolk neighborhood stands the huge obelisk called the Shard, with the demotic Sar or Shard for the 
demotic pharaonic Tsar in it for king or pharaoh. And like the word shard, pharaoh's personal bodyguards were called the shardan, like a protective guard obelisk to protect this big pharaonic city through the Egyptian obelisk as a symbol of Pharaoh's domination over London and over England. So this um, this was carved by the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, the Pharaohs. These are the bodyguards. Here's the name, the Shardan, Pharaoh's bodyguards. You see, they got the same round, well, probably the sun, Amun-Ra, on their heads, and they got these uh, the horns here. Exactly the same as this one here. There's a painting, of course, later on. But these were the, um, the wall carvings made by the uh, pharaohs. And they're officially called the Chardin, just like that, uh, that huge obelisk in London in uh, Suffolk. Etymologically, this is also where the island of Sardinia, an Italian island, where Sardinia got its name from, situated just next to Egypt. Sardinia, like the Shard. Yeah, the fair, here it says Pharaoh's Shard. And here is the, like here is the Swiss center. And here's the Swiss Re, this one here. And Re or Re is, of course, Amun Ra. You know. And here's Stame der Sturme from Suffolk, from here. So, you know, it's all Swiss here, you know, and Pharaonic here. The Swiss Center, the Swiss Re, the Knights Templars, the Blackfriars, you know. It's all Templars, Swiss, Pharaonic, you know. Also London Bridge, of course. Here they put the slaves here, and uh, you know, uh, prisoners, those who didn't want to obey. And the obelisk, this is a sort of an obelisk. The obelisk is the symbol of the pharaonic domination. So that's why they call it the Shard, because the, the, uh, the Shardan were pharaoh's bodyguards. And if this is the symbol of the pharaonic domination, it's like an obelisk protecting like the Shard or the Shardan, protecting Pharaoh. And Stama der Sturmer, well, he, he was born here in Suffolk, next to, next to Pharaoh and the Pharaonic pro protection, and next to the Swiss center, the Swiss Re, and the Knights Templars who founded Switzerland, and the Black Friars, you know, the, the Black Brotherhood. So, well, you don't believe he's one of them, eh? Well, he's acting very much against English and the English people, so you can't be of English descent. No, absolutely not. So here you can read about the Chardin or the Chardin. Chardin. This is where the word Shard is from. You know, Shard or Shard. Uh, a posh guy, he would anyway, he would pronounce this shirt, he would pronounce it shard, you know. And, uh, and anyway, in Demotic Egyptian, you know, they never wrote down the, uh, the vocals, only the consonants. So we don't really know 100% if the vocal is really an E, but it's probably an A, you know, otherwise. And anyway, you know. Otherwise, they, they wouldn't have called it the Shard. And of course, the Shard and Shardan here, it's from the Sar, you know, the um, the word for Pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus, Caesar, the king of Rome, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, uh, King Charles, Son Altesse Royale, S-A-R, you know, and... Here you can see them, the Chardon in battle as depicted in Medinet Habu. You see, they got these like Vikings and they were also called the Sea Peoples. So, yeah, well, maybe they were the Vikings, you know. And the Vi here, they, 
Yeah, they call him also Shardana, you know, with an A. And Shardanu. And uh, these, uh, they were also called the Haunabu. Uh, well, here it says Habu, the Haunabu. Here's Habu. The uh, Shardan, or the, uh, the Sea Peoples were called Haunabu in Pharaonic Egyptian. And this is a uh, relief in Abu Simbel, where they uh, carved it in the wall, the pharaohs. So, um, it says somewhere that they were the bodyguards of Pharaoh. Yeah, here. Um, an inscription by Ramesses II on a, on a steel from Tanis that recorded the Chardon pirates raid and uh, well, etc. Uh, the pharaoh subsequently incorporated many of these warriors into his personal guard. And also here, after Ramesses II succeeded in defeating the invaders and capturing some of them, Chardon captives are depicted in this pharaoh's bodyguard where they are conspicuous by their helmets with horns, with a bull protecting from the middle, their round shields, etc. So, you know, the horns on their helmets, you know, and being the sea peoples, it's very much uh, makes us think, of course, of the Vikings, you know. And if you look at the Drakkar, the Viking ship, well, it looks very much like a uh, like the pharaonic the the Egyptian ships, you know, probably the same. And this is probably the reason, like these guys, uh, ferocious uh, like uh, ferocious like warriors or killers, these Vikings. Uh, they had these advanced ships because they are Egyptian ships. And also in Venice, I made a video already about it. Um, they have the same style of ships. And of course, uh, from uh, also Venice, you know, you just cross the dip and you're in Egypt. Yeah? Yeah, it also says Sardana. And um, of course, Sardinia, you know, also like. Uh, like here, here's, here's Egypt, like here, and this is Sardinia, you know, next to Sicily, it's like the, the first island. Uh, we all know that the Egyptians, you know, they took over Rome, you know, with Caesar, married with uh, Cleopatra, and through the Etruscans, who also um, adored Isis and a lot of Egyptian gods. So uh, the, the Egyptian expansion first went to Persia, then Greece, and then to Italy, but also directly to Italy, because it's just next door, you know, you just, with their fantastic boats, they, uh, they went to Sardinia and called it Sardinia. So this is the origin why our masters, they call it the Shard, you know, from the word Sar. Um, king or pharaoh, you know, it's protecting our masters, like uh, Mr. Der Sturmer, Keir Starmer, our masters are protected by the Shard in his own neighborhood of Suffolk. So here in the next picture, you see the Swiss Ri, Ri for Ra, Amun Ra, it's all like obelisks towards the sky. And um, here it says, London's Swiss fifth column, Swiss sleeper agents in England. You know, it's all Swiss, Swiss re Switzerland, you know, it's all over. And the Knights Templars, the, the Blackfriars, the Shard, it's all Pharaonic and Swissies, you know, Leicester Square. <laughs> and you were always thinking that London was so British, <laughs> weren't you, eh? And look at the logo here. You know, they've got three vertical ones for the concept of three, and they've got one horizontal one for four, you know. 
So the three, the vertical rule, also the, ver the three I told you is them because it's the site for the pyramid, which is a triangle with three corners. And uh, the bottom is a square where the slaves are, you know, down below. You know, this is almost like a pyramid, this thing, you know, it's, it's got the same sort of pharaonic radiation on it with, with the top uh, part here. And the, uh, the new horizontal rule here, which is the, um, the Republican system, so altogether. So it says the concept of three and four, so it says square and compass. And there's a circle, so once more for the compass. So where's the square? Now well, look, this whole thing is like in a square. This is a square, you know, with the three and the four. So it says two times square and compass. They're really overdoing it, you know. And the Swiss Re, you know, they present it as a, uh, well, it is a reinsurance company. That's why there's the Re, you know. But, I mean, where's the insurance then? You know, why only Re? You know, because it's Ra, and they all know it. Amun Ra. Otherwise, they could have written the Swiss reinsurance company, which is probably the biggest in the world with 14,000 employees all over the world. So the Swissies, they got the biggest banks in the world, this small, tiny country. They got the biggest pharmaceutical companies, number one, Roche, number two, Novartis. And I told you, you know, about the uh, Pharaoh's poison and the, um, how, they are, how they are behind it, you know, and um, Pharaoh's bug war. So when the Swiss stormtrooper, Karl Stürmer was walking through this area as a kid from the Swiss center, all the obelisks and Knight Templars, the Blackfriars, London Bridge, the Shard. He thought by himself, yeah, this is my real heritage. I'm not English. And one day I will destroy England and the indigenous English population. And for that, I will invite the entire Middle East to make River Thames shine like Mother Nile from the old days, and Maga make Anglia glorious Amun, it says. So here you see the River Nile, or Thames. Here, Maga, make Anglia glorious Amun. Here's the Shard, the Swiss Re. For them, it's River Nile, really. And at a certain moment, the Thames is called River Isis, doesn't it now? So here you can read about the Swiss Re, or the Swiss Ra, Amun Ra. The Swiss Re limited is a swiss reinsurance company what is a reinsurance company is insurance that an insurance company purchases from a, oh blood it's complicated i'm just a uh, historian i don't understand all that is a swiss reinsurance company founded in 1863 and headquartered in zurich switzerland it is one of the world's largest reinsurers as measured by gross premiums written. The Swiss Re operates through around 80 offices in 29 countries and employs over 14,000 people, etc., uh, etc. Et you, know, you, you can read this yourself. So you always thought London you know, was uh, English, British, yeah? Well, anyway, I told you, the king doesn't have any more power in his uh, constitutional monarchy. He has nothing to say anymore, actually. And uh, so that's why he hides out, you know, as the picture showed uh, with his uh, Muslim friends, the sultans and the caliphs and all that. Oh, look, Silverstein is also in it, Larry Silverstein. You know, from the... Uh, Probably not allowed to pronounce the word, you know, the thing that happened in uh, in 2001 in New York. The two towers, they belong to Larry Silverstein. Might be interesting to read it all, but I don't feel like it. 
So, and also with the um, the ancestor of Elon Musk being the um, director of the bank in England, you know, a couple of hundred years back, the Haldemand, I think it was Frederick, or no, William Haldemand. And um, so London is nothing more than a subsidiary of the motherland in the Alps, of the principality in the Alps. I mean, look at it. It's all Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. And everything points to it that uh, Keir Starmer is Swiss. And he definitely doesn't like England nor the English people. You know, it's just, for him, it's just the only thing you're based to is the, uh, the principality, being knighted, uh, the orders, you know, the royals, power, money, secret, lodges. You know. So it's Swiss all over. You know, wake up, people. It's all the time the same thing. I've been telling you for more than 14 years on YouTube. So don't forget the logo, you know. I mean, it's visible, isn't it? You know, I've been telling you all the time. You know, you can see it yourself. And they are headquartered in Zurich in Switzerland, in the motherland. And here, of course, it says that the uh, this is the Swiss re office in London. I don't know what it is. Looks like a bullet. No, oh, they're shooting us. Oh. So here it says waves of Swiss immigrants into England in the 18th and 19th century which I showed you just before in that uh, text. I don't know the numbers, I can't find it, but I, I think it's substantial. And anyway, as in America, the problem is the Swiss is always, they always had for the key positions. As in the case of the um, allegedly uh, Swiss Starmer. In the 18th and 19th century, many Swissies emigrated to England, similar to what we could see in America, with today's one million Swiss Americans. Hoover became Hoover, and there is Swiss Consen, about which I made a video last year, about which I thought I was smart and funny calling Wisconsin Swissconsin, as here in my video, until I discovered a few months ago that the US Swissies actually do call it Swissconsin because they know it's theirs. Just punch Swissconsin in YouTube. And you see many, many videos called Swissconsin. Many videos, except mine. And when I made this video here, here you can see it, it's on the same channel. I made it like last year called Swissconsin. I thought I was the only one, you know, using this name. No, I'm not. I'm not. They know it. And I'll give you the proof. So here you can see this. I punched Swiss Consen with a big S and exactly the way uh, th this is the title of my video. In I put it in YouTube. And here to my big surprise, you know, I didn't know that at the moment I made this video. I thought, well, you know, there's so many Swiss there. It must be Wisconsin. The real name must be Swissconsin, right? And I thought I was, uh, I was smart. But to my big surprise, a couple of months back, I, I punched it into YouTube just to see if they show my video, which they don't. You know, They show these sort of videos. I've got 12,000 views on this video. And they show videos with like 300, like here, 369 views. And this is 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, the Swissies in America, they already called it Swiss Consent. 
And here it says the Swiss center of North America. So North America, they got a Swiss center, just like just like in London. I just showed it to you, the Swiss center of London. You know? And here the, the Swiss National Brown Swiss Convention, or oh, White Brown, Swiss Consent again. Eleven years ago, and here they have a Lake Geneva in in Swiss Consent, nine years ago. Uh, here also, Swiss Consent, Discover Wisconsin, they called it five years ago. Uh, you know, 69 views. They show a video with 69 views, but not my video, with 12,000 views. Yeah, Swiss Consent, eight years ago. Just, I don't know, it's, it's 250 views, Swiss, uh, views, Swiss Consent. So you see, yeah, another Swiss Consent, six years ago, 15 views. So that means my video with 12,000 views is worth less than this video uh, of uh, f with 15 views, right? Yeah, growing global citizens. Oh, what, 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 and they call it here, America's little Switzerland. You know, this is the fifth column, people. Another here, look, Swiss consonant here. It's the fifth column in America. Yeah, America's little Switzerland. So you see, I'm completely, this is shadow banning. Here, look, another Swiss con 12 years ago. Yeah. So they've been calling it Swiss consent for at least, I don't know, 250 years. And I thought I was smart, you know, like last year. No, I'm not smart, you know. It, but it is actually, they call it Swiss consent because it's theirs. You see, yeah, another Swiss concert eight years ago, 500 views, there's 300 views, but not my video. That means I'm completely shadow banned. Yeah, another Swiss concert three years ago, 14 views. Anything but my, yeah, even got a channel called Swiss concert. You know, they, they, uh, they bit parts of a Swiss cheese, you know, in the form of Wisconsin, probably. I call it Swiss Wisconsin. Yeah, so I'm I'm completely shadow banned. I'm uh, sabotaged by YouTube. There won't be new people just watching my videos. They show all the talk shows and talking nonsense uh, and all this, you know. And of course, all the the triple M's, you know, our masters uh, media, and uh, but not my videos. So the only way, you know, I wanted to change the world, you know, but it's, it, it won't work, you know. And I tried other video platforms like uh, Daily Motion and, and the other ones, and uh, also Brighton. They won't let me upload there anymore. And there was there, there were two other ones. I tried everything, you know, and then I I just gave it up. I don't I don't want to try uh, the the bit shoots and, and whatever, you know. They, they probably sends me as well there you know so now you know i'm not very much censored at the moment but they made a um a deal with the swissies you know that they won't show my videos you know so the only way and i wanted to change the world but without your help i cannot do it it's not about me you know i'm a modest person i what i'm doing is free it's for free I have an ideal. I, I want to. I want to change the world. You know. I, I want all this injustice to stop and all that. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to change the world. And again, it's not for me. I have no ego. You know, not at all. I'm a very modest person. I don't need anything. I've got my backpack, and uh, at the moment I can make some videos because I've been invited at some fans' place. Uh, there was another question I saw, you know, how can you make videos, you know, if you don't have a, uh, if you're a homeless, well, basically I'm still a homeless. The only thing I have is a, is a backpack. So without your help, uh, we cannot change the world. I did, a, I did a lot of work. 
So you must spread it and download it and re-upload it all over the place. You know, this is the only way. And again, I'm not asking any money. I'm not asking any, I'm asking nothing. You know, I'm a modest person. I want to change the world for all of us, for our children. So, but apparently, you know, most of the dumb slaves, you know, they're all, they're consumers. They're only consumers and let others take all the risks and don't do anything, you know. It's everyone for himself. So, I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. Uh, you know, what can I do? I tried everything, right? It's up to you now. But I know you won't, you won't. Some of you do, but very, very few. And this is why humanity will always lose against the enemy within. We are lost, you know, and there's no savior or some holy stuff, you know, coming out of the heavens all of a sudden. I mean, the holy ones, you know, the, the big holy one, you know, if he sees humanity, he would think, you know, they are not even worth saving, you know. Yeah. Well, that's it. Swiss Consen, here are the proofs. You know, they don't show my videos, but they show videos with 14 views. This is YouTube, eh? This is censorship. We are, this is the great democracy of the West and our freedom of speech and whatever, you know. This is what it is, people. Okay, but this was not the topic. Just to... Uh, so uh, so I, had, I just had to say this, yeah. The Swissies never really integrated in America, just as we can see here in Soho, London, where they have the Swiss center, where it says Switzerland and Swiss re in huge letters that Leicester Square, Soho, in London, belongs to the Swissies. This has been going on for a while, with the Swissies infiltrating England's politics. You remember former English Prime Minister Boris Johnson's ancestor being a Swiss mummy from the Swiss town of Basel? So here, this is, here's Boris Johnson. He wasn't even born in, in, in England. He was born in New York, can you imagine? So his father here and his grandmother. And here, von Pfeffel, that's nobility. And born in, in France. They're from all over, you know. Boris' grandmother in Versailles, where the, where the big castle is, or the biggest castle in the world, probably. And here, Freiherr Christian Hubert von Pfeiffel, also nobility. And here, some more nobility, Strasbourg. And all the way going back to the Swiss mummy, here it says, Boris, his great-grandmother, Anna Katharina Bischoff, Basel, Baselstadt, Basel, is the Swiss flag. Now, this is going on, this has been going on for a very long time, you know. As I told you, you know, they, they, they immigrate, infiltrate, integrate, and they take over. And then they give you all the orders. And in the Swiss center of London, you can see the older Swiss cottage. I showed you the picture before. The Helvetic Church, the Sun, and 13 cantons. Well, why the sun and 13 cantons? What does the sun have to do with Swiss cantons? And why the number 13? Well, because Swaziland is Pharaoh's base in the Alps. The sun is Amun-Ra, shining over their Alpine stronghold with Osiris being cut into 13 parts and the Knights Templars arrested in France on a Friday the 13th. And the sun, it's not only Amun-Ra, but it's also, uh, it represents uh, Horus. 
So, and the number 13, it, um, it represents uh, also, it's um, connected to Osiris, his father. So we see both here. And here, here is the sun hieroglyph. You know, there's a thing in the middle. Usually it's round with these two bars on each side, which I've shown you, you know, already 14 years ago in my video, The Pharaoh Show. So all this occultism in the Swiss center of London, this Swiss occultism, you know, and this is uh, a typical Freemason hangout, you know, where they come and dine probably. And um, the same like gold and black colors as the Nazis had, you know, it's all the whole thing is like dark, you know, the Black Friars stuff sort of thing, you know, black. And uh, this is where they conspire against uh, England, you know. And um, so it's probably a favorite hangout of uh, Der Sturmer, uh, Karl Sturmer, Mr. Keir Starmer, yeah. Of course he comes here. There's even an area in England called Little Switzerland, which doesn't look like Switzerland at all. So there must be another quite obvious reason for that, like having a dense concentration of Swissies having emigrated into Linton and Linmouth, which are called Little Switzerland. And there are more areas in England called Little Switzerland. So here it says, Little Switzerland in UK. There was no more place for England, so I make an exception, call it UK. But it's not a kingdom, so I, you shouldn't use the word UK. So here you can see the uh, Swiss sisters of Isis, because the Knights Templars, they were talking French in the beginning. And they called Switzerland Suisse, which is an abbreviation for Sœur d'Isis, Suisse. So the sisters, that means the sisters of Isis. Later on, they started to talk German and they founded the Teutonic Knights who did another 200 years of crusades in the Baltics after the 200 years of crusades in the Middle East only to get their Templar's treasure. That's from the pyramids. That was, that's what it was all about. They were the grab robbers, actually. And um, so, Sir Dizis. And here you can see hanging the last uh, indigenous English person. Uh, so, uh, Keir Starmer, he got rid of the last indigenous English person here. in. Uh, in England, in Little Switzerland, in England. Ain't that so, Keir Starmer, or Karl Sturmer, from Pharaohs, Knights Templars, Principality in the Alps, who wants to destroy England and its indigenous population to replace them? and make it look like little Egypt at Pharaoh's River Nile. Therefore, the Thames, its real name is River Isis, which you can read here. And the name Thames relates to the Greek goddess Themis, which is the Greek name for Ma'at, the Egyptian goddess. So here it says, here you can see the, uh, the River Thames with the Swiss center here, Knights Templars, the Black Friar, um, Swiss Re here, and here the Shard, and here Southwark, where this bloke here, who's peeping from behind the wall, he's from here. And the, here it says, the Isis, the original name of this one here is the Isis, or it's the river Thames, and it's from the Greek goddess Thamis. Okay, I know that there is some uh, Celtic name, Thamesis or something, 
But, well, we all know they don't give names from a subdued and conquered people like the Celts, who've they, who've they, whom they uh, genocided, the Romans did. They only give uh, uh, street names and rivers and places only from their own heritage. So it's all pharaonic. You know, Themis is Ma'at. And this is what they want. Let River Nile shine again. It's sort of like Maga sort of thing, you know. So look who's watching us here from behind the wall, from behind the corner. Of course, his ethnic roots and the order of the bloodbath have initiated Sire Keir Starmer or Kal Sturmer into all of this. Therefore, his actions consequently proving there's nothing British about Kal Sturmer. So here, the Swiss Re, Switzerland. And I left here in this image the S E R because it's of course SAR. The, the stand that stands here in the octagon police service. And SAR, it's the king or the pharaoh. And whom do we serve? Yeah, where, where did it start to serve somebody else? Well, we served the king, you know, the SAR. This is etymologically the word service, it comes from. Uh, sa, and we are the serfs with an F, you know. So police sa, just like his posh friends, they pronounce service like service, you know, oh service, the you know service to the people. So he can read about the Isis here, the Isis, and here it says. Uh, the Isis is an alternative name for the river Thames, used from its source in the Cotswolds, and it is joined by the river Tham, well, why not Thames, at Dorchester in Oxfordshire. Notably, the Isis flows through Oxford. Here you can see that, you know, where they do the rowing. Uh, it says the rowing. The name Isis is especially used in the context of rowing at the University of Oxford. A number of regattas are held on the Isis, including eight, eight week you know, octagon, the most important Oxford University uh, regatta. <laughs> What's this, the Hillary team? <laughs> okay, well, here you can see them rowing here. You know. And of course, these uh, all the posh blokes, they, you know, they want to row on their own river, where they come from, a River Nile, a River Isis, the Isis. This is called the Isis. You know, and it's, it's, it's part of the River Thames. And they also call River Thames, they call it Isis, you know. They... Uh, and here's some more stuff about it. Let you read it yourself. The Isis Neutron source is named after the river Isis. It's very important for them. You know. Actually, they the masters they look down upon the uh, upon the Europeans. They lie to us, you know, and they make a problem like uh, they create this problem with immigrants and everybody talking about immigrants. I mean, who got them here in the first place? The masters did, you know, so nobody thinks of the masters anymore, except Homie Ross. So here's River Isis, you know, where everything is. The Swiss Re is there, the Swiss Center, the Shard, the Knights Templars, the, um, the Black Friars, they're all on River Isis, and a lot more like the MI6 building, uh, et cetera, et cetera. James Bond is there. 
So here you can see the goddess Thames, where the, go where the name River Thames is from. That's why they don't say, you should say in English, Thames, you know, it's, uh, you know, pronounced it that way. Americans probably pronounce it that way. No, they don't. They say River Thames. Why? Because it's Thames. There you go. Yeah. In Greek mythology, Thames uh, is the goddess and personification of justice, divine order, law, and custom. That is Ma'at. She is the equivalent, the Greek equivalent of the Pharaonic goddess Ma'at. And here she is holding a sword, just like Ma'at. What is up is down. Uh, I think here as well. No, it's chopped off. And um, like here also with the sword, and she's got her, her yeah, it says, uh, with her eyes covered, you know, like the um, Lady Justice. You know, nowadays we call it Lady Justice. That's the uh, Roman form here, yeah, Lady Justice. You know, like that. And Ma'at. You know, this is Ma'at. This is, uh, it says, uh, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. You know, when the, um, when the Egyptians, the pharaohs, when they did the expansion, you know, they came to Greece and they called this uh, Thames instead of Ma'at. And then they went to Rome. They called it Lady Justice and up to our days. So River Thames is Themis, Ma'at, actually. It's all related to Pharaoh and their base in the Alps, of course. And here, you can read this here, there's Little Switzerland. You know, it's, here it says, a Linton and Linmouth. The Little Switzerland term refers to the coast and countryside around Linton and Linmouth. Um, yeah, well, and it's about here, this part of Britain. And, well, this doesn't really look like Switzerland, so there must be another reason for that. Eh? There must be a very dense population of Swissies there. And I showed you in the 18th century and the 19th century, there were um, waves of uh, Swissies going to England. Yeah, they call it English Switzerland, Swiss style. Well, we got the Swiss center, center now we got the Swiss style. I don't know what that is. Should have a look at Starmer to know what the Swiss style is, eh? You know, that's uh, as they did with me. It's total terror. Well, if this is little Switzerland here, well, it doesn't look like Switzerland. There's no sea. Anyway, there's no sea, you know. So I understand as there is no sea, they like to go to the sea and, and maybe to the, um, if you follow the, uh, the river Isis, you also get to the sea. So... Little Switzerland, and there are more little Switzerlands in England. So here as well, there's a little Switzerland. I can't open it up for you because of copyright issues you know, already. And uh, here it says little Switzerland's Alpine Kitsch in England, uh, Switzerland, Alpine. Uh, and this is again in another part of, uh, of England. So if you punch this here, you uh, you can have a look at it uh, yourselves. And, uh, yeah, well, many little Switzerlands. And I told you, I showed you in America, there's little Switzerland. In South America, there's every country has a little Switzerland. In Luxembourg, in Germany, mm. these are the fifth columns, you know important imported from the motherland to infiltrate integrate and then take over in this channel though i don't discuss if mass immigration is good or bad which i leave to all you dumb slaves to think about for yourselves i only discuss 
why our masters, like Sire Karl Stürmer, are doing this, which is like a chess game for me and the masters, in which I think ten moves ahead, while the dumb slaves only see the current situation of this imaginary chessboard and can't even look over the table where the chessboard is on and just complain without end, like in all those endless talk shows in the internet. So you see the dumb slave, he can't even look properly over the table. So how can you see into the deep? The dumb slave only see, sees the current situation, which is like this. He cannot possibly see like 10 moves ahead like our masters. This is the master, you know. They think 10 moves ahead. And this is me. I just turn my back on it. Because for me, mass immigration is our master's problem, since they deliberately imported them all. I therefore categorically refuse to make it my problem. It's their problem, so they deal with it themselves. First of all, our masters and their triple M, which stands for Masters Mega Media. They talk about political asylum and not, for instance, humanist asylum, like in asylum seekers, because it's all politics, a, polit a political asylum, and has nothing to do with humanism. And our master's politics, it is to mix all peoples, all races, and all religions up. So there won't be any more identitarian group, as for instance, in England and the English, who can say, we are English, we are white and Christian. We've been living here for more than a thousand years. This is our country. Therefore, we want to rule our country ourselves and won't take any more orders from London Parliament, the government, nor the king. But if everything is mixed, and the whole world is mixed, there will be no more, this is our country, we've always been here, our religion, our language, our culture, and we will rule ourselves. As nationalism is the worst enemy for our masters, and then there will be only be Pharaoh and the rest. This is how the masters have stolen our lands, our identity, our individualism, and our freedom. This is global chess by the masters and their principality in the Alps, where the world government is the octagon. Then Karl Sturmer and his master pals all over Europe always emphasize integrating the immigrants. Now, what do they mean with that? As clearly none of them is integrated and they all prefer to hold on to the customs of the country they fled away from in the first place on the grounds of being persecuted by those very same customs to which they still cling on 
after having reached the beloved and final destination of their so-called escape towards Europe. As there clearly is no integration achieved, what do our masters mean with it then? Well, it means the integration into the workforce of our master's slave army of workers, so Pharaoh can take 50% of taxes off the wages, so that the masters, their children and grandchildren can parasite on the integrated mixed workforce of dumb slaves inside Pharaoh's cosmopolitan slave world. Sire Karl Stommer, I know who you are. I know where you're from, and I know what you want. Swissy is always in it, in every crime against humanity and against its various nations.